today, the 16th Sunday of the Pentecost. We are again at Long Prairie, Minnesota. And the epistle for the 16th Sunday of the Pentecost was taken from the first epistle, coming the epistle of St. Paul of Ephesians, chapter 3. Brethren, I pray you not to faint in my tribulations for you, which are your glory. For this cause I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom all fraternity in heaven and earth is named, and that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened by his Spirit, and with might unto the inward man, that Christ may dwell by faith in your hearts, that being rooted and founded in charity, you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, to know also the charity of Christ, which surpasseth all knowledge, that you may be filled unto all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do all things more abundantly than we desire or understand, according to the power that worketh in us, to him be glory in the church, and in Christ Jesus unto all generations, world without end. Amen. In the Gospel, taking that according to St. Luke, chapter 14. At that time, when Jesus went into the house of one of the chief of the Pharisees on the Sabbath day to eat bread, they watched him. And behold, there was a certain man before him that had the dropsy. And Jesus answering spoke to the lawyers and the Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal upon the Sabbath day? But they held their peace. But he, taking him, healed him, and sent him away. And answering them, he said, Which of you shall have an ass or an ox fall into a pit, and will not immediately draw him out on the Sabbath day? And they could not answer him to these things. And he spoke a parable also to them that were invited, marking how they chose the first seats at the table, saying to them, When thou art invited to a wedding, sit not down in the first place, Thus perhaps one more honorable than, thee, than thou be invited by him. And he that invited thee and him, come and say to thee, Give this man place, and then thou begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when thou art invited, go sit down in the lowest place. And when he who invited thee cometh, he may say to thee, Friend, go up higher. Then shalt thou have glory before them that sit at the table with thee, because every one that exalts himself shall be humbled, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. Those are the words of the days of God. In the Bible, it's only those men. Two new considerations taken primarily from St. Ambrose on the scripture reading of this morning in the Holy Breviary. We begin to read the book of Judith. And Judith, of course, is a type of the Blessed Virgin Mary who defeated Holofernes in the great battle of Bethulia after a long siege. After over two years' siege, the people of Bethulia were ready to, ready to surrender. And the uh, Judith defeated Holofernes and cut off his head. And St. Ambrose says, How did Judith defeat Holofernes? And what was the great sin of Holofernes? He says, quite simply, he was filled with too much wine. And Judith, who was a widow for seven years, she was filled with fasting. And he was filled with wine. And when wine meets fasting, she will prepare to battle by the fast of seven years of her widowhood. And he who was confident in his pleasure, in his army, in his, in his troops, and who had too much wine, he was defeated by Judith. And today a brief consideration on the sin of drunkenness and of the problem of wine. You know that we are now in an age in which drunkenness must be spread not only to the spice of drinking too much wine and too much whiskey and too much beer and so on, alcohol, but also is spread to all manner of drugs. And one of the great lies of the modern age, and it is not only a lie of the modern age, it is also a lie of the past, but especially of the modern age, that to be a drunk 
As we've seen, used to say, if you're a poor man, you're a drunkard, and you're a menace to society, and you go to the streets. If you're a wealthy man, you're an alcoholic, and you have a disease that is over-controlling you, and you are not guilty. Now what has happened? That was the 1950s when he said that. Now there are no more drunkards, except for the ones. Druggies are people that live in the streets and don't have a job. Drunkards are people that live in the streets and don't have a job and are homeless. These are a menace to society. You should never give them money because you know they're going to be drunks and they're going to spend their money on alcohol. They're going to spend their money on drugs. They're going to spend their money on worthless things and you don't want to aid and abet them. You don't want to be an enabler. However, 80% of Americans overdose on some kind of drug. Police departments no longer are, have the requirement, or they're reducing the requirement of if you are a druggie, if you are involved in drugs, you can't become a cop. Now they can't find any young man who wasn't somehow involved in drugs to become a cop, and so they have to overlook their requirements or reduce them. And how do we look at alcoholism, that of drunkenness in our age today? It is no longer considered a sin. It is no longer considered a free will act. Poor man's a drunk. He just drinks too much. The alcohol has taken over him. And he's not guilty. He's not wicked. He's not responsible. But consider this, St. Ambrose. Holofernes was a drunk. And what happened to him? He lost his head. This is the first thing that happened to him. And when he lost his head, because he was so drunk, remember that she came into the, into the, into the, uh, Judith came into the camp of Holofernes, and he was filled with wine, and he was drunk, and he lost his head. You do not let the woman of the enemy come alone with you in your tent when you are not in your faculties. You're going to lose your head. And so he did. And when he lost his head, says St. Ambrose, he felt no pain. Because he was so filled with drunkenness that when Judith took up that sword, Holofernes' sword, the sword that he had, just like David killed Goliath with Goliath's sword, so Judith brought no weapon to battle. Her weapon was her virtue and his sin. And Telephernes was lying there drunk, because he had drunk wine and drunk wine, and he lay drunk and passed out. And she took his sword, and she was not strong. Perhaps it took a few whacks for her to cut off his head. But because he was filled with drunkenness, he should have woke up immediately from the pain. But St. Ambrose says he did not wake from the pain. His drunkenness caused him to lose his head, his drunkenness caused him to be cut in his head, to be amputated without any pain. And his drunkenness brought the victory to Judith and the defeat to Holofernes. And not only did he lose, but his whole army lost. Holofernes did not just die and one other man died in battle. Men die in battle. They go to battle and they swing their swords and they die. But then you must kill another man. But consider this sin of drunkenness. When Holofernes dies, he does not die alone. His entire army dies. This sin is a sin that affects not just the drunkard. It is a sin that affects the wife of the drunkard, the husband of the drunkard, the children of the drunkard. And it is a most vile sin. But what does the world look at today? Drunkenness is not that big of a problem. So a man's got a problem with drugs. So he's got a weakness. In fact, he does, he's not responsible. The drugs have too much power over him. He's just a cocaine addict. He's just an addict of whatever kind of drug. There's so many millions of drugs now to date. He's just a drunkard. It's too much. He does not have a free will. But in fact, he does. Every time a man decides to take a drink, he chooses to take it. And every time he does this, he chooses to abandon his duty to his family, his duty to his God, his duty to society, and his own responsibility to himself. 
He is not able to fulfill any of his duties and responsibilities. He is a menace to society. And what happens when he commits his sin? He affects the whole world around him. And it's by his free will choice. The father takes his money and it goes into alcohol. He loses his strength and will to be able to fulfill his duty. He is no longer married to his wife. Whatever is that woman, whatever is that man that she married, he is something else that comes in the drunkard into the house. That is not him. And then he often turns to violence or he turns away from his duties and responsibilities. The money that was meant to raise his children, the money that was meant to take care of his wife, the money was meant to even take care of the legitimate things that he himself needs. It goes into drugs and it goes into alcohol. And this is a sin against society and it is a free will choice. One of the great evil lies of Alcoholics Anonymous, AA, already many times had this debate with drunkards who live in the state of moral sin. And even when they leave behind their alcoholism, their drunkenness, there's no such thing as alcoholism. When they leave behind their drunkenness, they say, well, I was overcome by a disease. Uh, drinking is a disease. Cancer is a disease. You can have heart disease. But can you choose, today I am not going to have cancer cells. <laughs> today I'm not going to have a heart problem. Today I'm not going to have a breathing problem. Today I'm going to not have a walking problem. Today, I'm not going to have a sugar problem of diabetes. Drunkenness is nothing like any of those diseases. They are diseases inside the body, which if you freely choose to like them, then you like them. But they live without your likes. They live without your dislikes. They are physical ailments of the body. Drunkenness is not a physical ailment of the body. It is a free will choice called a mortal sin by which a man or a woman chooses to take a little extra beer, a little extra whiskey, some drugs, in order to escape the world, in order to foster his own foolish depression, in order to have some kind of pleasure, and it is a free will choice. You don't freely choose to have a heart attack. You don't freely choose to have heart disease. But you do freely choose to get drunk. You freely choose to pick up that those drugs and inject them. You freely choose to go and purchase them. You freely choose to take these choices and they are will, free will choices that develop into a habit. A habit is also, the habit occurs when we do a same act over and over again and it takes over our will, takes over our lives. Good habits are called virtues. Bad habits are called vices. To commit a sin is always wrong, but to commit a sin habitually equals to be in a state of wickedness and is infinitely more wrong. So to get drunk once in a while is a bad thing, but it is only one sin. But to have the habit of drunkenness is an infinitely worse thing. And somehow we believe that when a man is a drunkard, he can't help it. When he dies, he goes to the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he goes to hell. And there was a most severe judgment. I gave you, thou canst be steward no longer. You were the steward of your money. You used it for your own pleasure. You used it uh, not for the church. You used it not for the poor. You used it not for your wife. You used it not for your children. You did not use it for anything good. You have lost your head. St. Ambrose says, the head is the first thing to go. When we are drunkards, the head loses its thought, its reason. And what is it that makes a man different from all the other animals? The fact that we have a reason. And why is it a mortal sin to get drunk? Because when you get drunk, you lose, lose the use of your reason. You no longer have control of your choices as you are supposed to do, and therefore you sin gravely. Man is a rational creature, and a man who is a drunkard is most vile before God. He is most de de despised before God and the angels and the saints, 
because he is directly attacking his own rationality, his own nature. It is a kind of perversion. It always leads to other sins. It is a, one of the great effects of the sin of, of, of um, the uh, of, of, of pleasure, of false pleasure, the sin of gluttony. The sin of gluttony is perfected in this sin, in this sin of drunkenness, and in the sin of the use of drugs. And oftentimes these things are done for what purpose? Why does the man become a drunk? Very often it is because he does not want to fulfill his responsibilities. He's lazy and he does not want to fulfill his responsibilities. He believes he cannot fulfill his responsibilities and therefore he turns to drunkenness in order to have an excuse to turn away, to, to be a turn away from God. It is a most vile sin. Judith, a beautiful young girl, destroyed an entire army because it was ruled by a drunk. A man immersed in his own, in his own pleasures, immersed in his own self, losing his own reason, Therefore, he lost his head, said St. Ambrose. He lost his head. And he felt no actual pain in losing his head because his senses had been dulled. And what happens to the drunkard is that his conscience becomes dulled. He becomes dulled and dulled and dulled. He loses his own personality. He loses his own sense of sensation, his own way of, his own normal way that God made him to be. He's attacking his own nature. It is a most vile and wicked sin. And it is everywhere in the world today. And the drunkard must face, the druggie must face. You are a worthless drugger, druggie. You are a worthless drunk. You have decided to sin. You have decided to go against God. Don't blame it on sickness. Don't blame it on alcohol. Don't blame it on being raised on grade B milk. Don't blame it on a bad childhood. It is a choice of the free will. And the man who is a drunkard, the man who is a druggie, the woman who is the same, they can choose, I will not drink anymore. I will not take drugs anymore. I choose not to do this because I have a free will. And God gives me the grace to be able to stay away from my own wicked life and my own wicked ways. It is possible, but it must. we must face it. Face the truth. The drunkard is a liar. He does not speak the truth. Drunkard turns away from the good of his own family, from the good of his own society, from all his responsibilities, and he blames it all on alcohol, blames it all on drugs. As he chooses to commit these sins more and more, his will gets weaker and weaker, and yet the will is never taken away. In fact, the will is strengthened in vice. And as the will becomes strengthened in vice, it becomes weaker in every regard to virtue. For instance, the great expert, the great expertise of all alcoholics, so-called alcoholics, drunkards, and all druggies, is that they are master liars. Master liars. Who is the father of lies? He is called Lucifer. And when you become a master liar because of your habits, don't call that habit a sickness. Don't call that habit a disease. It is mortal sin. The habit that produces lies. They become master liars, so good at it. I'm not going to take drugs anymore. I'm not going to be a drunk anymore. You can trust me this time. And in fact, they are lying. They are lying. They are lying. And not only are they lying to others, but St. Gregory the Great says, the final punishment of the liar is that he believes his own lies. He believes his own lies. This is a great wickedness. We must not believe our own lies. Face the truth. The drunkard, the druggie, they have decided to choose, take that which they are forbidden to take or to take it in excess. Drugs are forbidden, period. Alcohol is nothing wrong with alcohol. Whiskey is good. Beer is good. Wine is good. These things are created by God and they're wonderful things. There's nothing wrong with them. However, to be taken in excess to where we lose our reason, to lose our control over, the, over, over our exercise of these things constitutes a mortal sin. And therefore, those who have this problem, the best policy is cold turkey, no more. Because they no longer have the will to, to strength of will to say, I will only have one drink and I'll stop. Therefore, take no drinks. Same is true also of gambling. Those of a gambling addiction. Again, it is an addiction to a sin. There's nothing wrong with gambling either. 
You can gamble, you can bet on something here and there, that's fine. There's, no, there's nothing immoral about that. However, those who are addicted to gambling are in the state of sin. They are taking their money and they're giving it away in the, in the chance to try to find some quick way to get, to get rich. It's a complete, a complete uh, failure of their exercise of responsibility over their funds. And over those months, it's create great sorrows in their own families and in their own world. And then they also say, it's not my fault, it's not my fault, it's not my fault. And they also become expert liars. Now the trouble with lies is that when lies enter into our blood, very rare is their repentance. So the drunkard, the alcoholic, the gambler who has these great sins in his blood, the first step to overcoming these sins is recognize the truth. I am a drunk. I am a druggie. I am an alcohol. I am a. I am a, a, an excessive gambler, and this is a problem, and I have to quit, and it's my own fault. No one else's. First thing is tell the truth and fight against the father of lies, and then take the practical steps to overcome the vice and accept the response, accept the punishments that come from this vice. Bishop Sheen points out, alcoholism, so-called alcoholism or drunkenness, is a good example of, the, of every kind of sin. Because what is the effect of sin? Bad health. What's the effect of sin? Loss of friends. What's the effect of sin? Destruction of my own heart, misery whenever you're by yourself. The effect of sin is misery in my mind, misery in my heart, misery in my soul, misery in my body, and early death. That's the effect of sin. And drunkenness, drugging, they are easily, look at how they grow old at an early age and how their health is destroyed at the very young age because of the sin of alcohol being taken excessively. It is not a disease. It is not to be treated as a disease. Now it is possible that when you drink too much beer and too much whiskey, you have a liver problem. You can address the liver problem by taking appropriate medications to deal with the liver. But what is the cause of the problem? It's called, you are a drunk. You have chosen to sin by this habit of viciousness. It must be brought to an end. Face the facts and fight against it. So that St. Ambrose says, Holofernes, he lost his head. And he was such an imbecile he was so proud, he was so filled with wine, that he didn't even feel the pain when he lost his head. And he put himself in the place of defeat. He was the one that made himself alone with Judith. He is the one that drank until he fell collapsed on the ground. He is the one that left his sword that she might chop off his head and that she was able to easily defeat him because he created the situation of his own defeat because of excess of wine. And how is it that she defeated him? Because she lived by fasting. Now remember that we are all obliged as Catholics to fast. We have the fast of Lent, by which we have a small fast every Lent during the 40 days. We have also the Ember days four times throughout the year. To remind us that we must fast. We cannot always take food and drink whenever we want it. There must be a holding back. Do your work first and then take a little sustenance. But do not always respond to the desire of the, of, of the flesh because this destroys the head, takes away the sensitivity of our conscience, and destroys our will. So that when we go to battle, we are not going to be able to fight. We're not going to be able to fight against temptation. We're not going to be able to persevere through difficulties. The devil makes sure that we have all the pleasures of the world for a time. And why does he do that? In order to destroy our wills and make us, each of us, liars. One great liar with this sin was Herod. Herod was filled with wine. Herod was a drunkard. And Herod was had the desire of pleasure. And Herod, that wicked Herod, what can he say? When he was told, Jesus Christ is coming to you, he was excited. Liar. He wanted to see Christ. Liar. He was happy to speak to him. And he asked him to perform miracles. And he told him that he would believe in him. Lies, lies, and lies. And Herod believed his own lies. 
Hence he was swine. And Lord Jesus Christ said, cast not pearls before swine. Drunkards, druggies, the impure, immersed in impurity, they are swine. And they, they, they are immersed in their filth and they try to cover their consciences by saying, oh, it's just a disease, it's just a sickness, it's just, it's, it's just a weakness, it's not my fault. Believe me, if I could do something about it, I would. You're a liar. You want to overcome drunkenness? Stop drinking. You want to overcome drugs? Stop doing drugs. Who is going to be the one to make that choice? You are. The individual must make the choice himself. How do we build up the strength to do that? Make sure that we follow the simple rules of the church. Do our duties daily, including when we don't feel like we want to do them. That daily rosary, we don't always feel like it, but it strengthens the soul. Make sure it gets done. Don't sleep until noon. Make sure that there is a there is a fulfillment of our work responsibilities. Don't just eat whenever you feel an impulse, but make sure that you fulfill your responsibilities, do your duty, and then take a little stuff, take a little repast, and, and offer up a little sacrifice, a little something here and there, besides at the time out at the time of the fast, of the fast of Lent and so on. We must take the steps. And then those that are immersed in the sin of drunkenness, in the sin of drugs, do not make excuses in sins. Don't make excuses. Take the responsibility. Don't follow the father of lies. Be honest. And the humble drunk and the humble druggie who recognizes his great wickedness, God will see that and he will have mercy on him. But the many, major, many are fulfilled with a great pride and a great, a great uh, 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 making of excuses, and these shall be cursed by God. Remember, St. Ambrose says how defeated he was. And consider Queen Esther. Queen Esther also, he says, a second example of drunkenness. Esther also fasted three days before she went before the king, whereas Haman, Haman, who wanted to kill the Jews, he decided to drink. And the scripture tells us while he was drinking and rejoicing over the death of the Jews, and he was so happy that he had built the gibbet. Who constructed the gibbet upon which Ammon was hung? It was Ammon. Who created the situation in which Holofernes died? It was Holofernes. Holofernes was responsible for Holofernes' death because Holofernes sinned and Holofernes' stupidity. And Ammon was responsible for Ammon's death he constructed the gibbet. He made sure that it was strong. And he thought a Jew would hang from it. And he drank. And he was drunk. And they came and took him from his cups. Says St. Ambrose. He was drinking in the cups. He was drinking and drinking. And he was rejoicing in his drunkenness. And he was filled with great confidence. And the soldiers came and took him from his cups. They took him from his wine glasses. And they dragged him to the gibbet. And he says, I made this gibbet, but I didn't make it for me. Oh, yes, you did. The druggie and the drunkard wonder why no one likes them. Because you're a drunk. Because you're a druggie. Because you are worthy of not being liked. Who created the gibbet? Why did you lose your job? Because you're a drunk. Because you're a druggie. Why does no one like you? Because you're a drunk. Because you're a druggie. Why are you miserable all the time? Because you're a drunk. Because you're a druggie. Who is the one who created the gibbet upon which he is hung? Who is the one that created, gave the sword that his head might be chopped off? This must be faced in our times. Very important. Drunkards and druggies must combat this sin by speaking the truth and turning to a little bit of sorrow, repentance for their sins, taking responsibility for their own wickedness, and recognizing that the evils that are happening around them these evils are their fault. And as St. Ambrose says, note that this sin does not affect only the drunkard. For when Holofernes became a drunk and Holofernes was wicked, the entire army of the Assyrians was defeated and wiped out. And so it is not just affecting the one who has a sin. All sins are that way, but in a very visible manner is the sin of drunkenness and so-called alcoholism and drug addiction. It is not, and they should not be called diseases. 
They are sins. Sins that cry to God for heaven for vengeance and sins that must be repented of and must be done penance against. And remember also, say the saints, the money that is wasted in alcohol and the money that is wasted in drugs, this is stolen money. It is money that was meant to be given to the church and it was not. Meant to be given to the wife and it was not. Meant to be given to the children and it was not. Therefore, it's stolen money. And stolen money must be repaid. So when the sin of drunkenness has been overcome, one well, drunk must consider that as he wasted his money in sin, so he must now learn to waste his money in virtue, to waste his money in charity, to waste his money in the good of the, of, of, of the church, in the good of his wife and children, and do not waste it on himself. And in this way, he repays for the sin and its effects. So in any case, he must face his problem of drunkenness, combat it, and realize it has very far-reaching consequences. And Ambrose says, Holofernes, dead. Holofernes, damned. Holofernes, army destroyed, because Holofernes was a drunk. Don't be a drunk or a druggie. And turn to fasting and ask the Blessed Virgin Mary. Esther and Judith both stand for the Blessed Virgin Mary. And they are both types of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Esther and Judith. And they defeated Holofernes, and they defeated all saints. And let us have a great devotion to the Blessed Virgin to teach us how to overcome these so-called addictions to drugs and addictions to alcohol, which are nothing more than sins worthy of great punishment. So I bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.